Okay, everybody, now. I just want to do... I'm going to call this Tuesday Night Confessions. And so, I'm just sitting in my mom's house here. Ooh. And... Okay, um... I'll just whenever I... I think that's a good idea to do. I made some vegetable soup. A couple of days ago, I put cabbage in it. It's homemade cabbage, homegrown cabbage, and, um peas and got some frozen vegetables in there okay hamburger but um okay the main thing i just see you know the van life and stuff like that i guess i've always lived in a sticks and bricks house i had my shack i want to tell you about my shack behind my mom's house and i built it in 1998 and i lived in it for a year and a half but I still had the house to come and take a shower and eat and stuff like that. And I had all my stuff in the house. But to live in my RV full time, it's going to be different. Because I'm not going to really have any stuff. I'm just going to have the stuff that's inside the camper. So, um, but um, just the downsizing. and It's really a different lifestyle. So... A different way of life, you know, so. And to start with, that's why I bought a cheap rig to start with, and I can make it nicer. Because, you know, I can start where I'm at. And, but. It's something that can be built up into a nice RV. But it can also be like a tiny house. I can take my truck camper off my truck and use it like a stationary base of operation, like a tiny cab cabin when it's off my truck, so, and I'm not married to the same pickup truck, I'm not married to the pickup truck, if it was an all-in-one RV, I would be married to that drivetrain, and if I want to take it off the truck and leave it up on the concrete blocks for a long period of time, I can do that, you know, I can drive the truck with having to without having to, um, but anyway, it seems like to me the core of my version of the van life is not really about travel. Travel is part of it, um, but everything has its core. It's not the core of it. You know, to me, the core is getting away from it all. That's what drew me to Elvis Travels. Because his life wasn't working out. He worked as a security guard. And they put him in a, a ghetto motel or whatever to be a security guard where he did not want to be. And that's the main thing. If you have a 9 to 5 ham and nigger job and you have to pay the rent, you can't really afford to lose your job. Because if you're unemployed for a year, what are you going to do to pay the rent? What's going to happen to you? And if you don't have parents to bail you out, you know, I'm getting older. You know, my dad's already dead. My grandparents that I used to live with, they're dead. Really, all I got is my mom, you know. I mean, but I guess the freedom, and it's like the off-grid life, you know, of being off-grid. Tiny house prep or off-grid. Just like now the, the whole system is crashing because of COVID. But that's kind of what a prepper is, you know. Someone who prepares, you know. They have an RV. They have something to live in in case they lose everything they own. And uh, or somebody that has their family property taken away and they lose the family property. It's like if someone has family property that they live on, and the family pro property sold, and they really have to live in their RV. It's the financial freedom, and uh, the ability to just to have something secure that's yours, and it may be an adjustment and a change of life, but it's a change of life that you can live with. 
if you have a Kindle, we're living in a small space. And that's the whole point is your camper can be on the truck or off the truck. It doesn't have to be on the truck. It can be on the truck, off the truck. It can be, um, it can be on the truck. It can be off the truck. It can function as a tiny house. Or it can, um, you can take it and, um, like a tiny house that you take it on a piece of property, on family property, and you put your tiny house on the family property and you live in it, live in it on one place. The guy that's called Little House Off Grid, it was Little House on the Road, now it's called Little House Off Grid, the camper that he made, homemade truck camper. You know, and it seems like that he's living off grid now, and it was tiny house on the road, and now he's graduated to, you know, be able to live on that piece of property inside that tiny house. And so it's less, I mean, van life is the thing because you don't have a piece of property or you want to travel and see the world. But ideally, you know, it's really about your, that's the core. You know, that's the core, 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 central core of their lifestyle is tiny house. You know, it isn't vacation, even though vacations are wonderful and good. It isn't Grand Canyon, take a trip to the Grand Canyon. It isn't, you know, my bucket list of places to see before I die. That's not really the core. Even though those things are part of it, it's just not the central core. Because the central core is the freedom. Economic, financial freedom. And you can work in a job and have your job, but you don't have to work as hard. You don't have to work as many hours. And if you... um. Sometimes at jobs, they hold you to, I mean, you're married to your job because, you know, a lot of jobs really don't want, they won't let you have any slack if you need off for a certain reason and they don't let you off. What are you going to do? You could lose your job over this or that or anything. People lay in bed tossing and turning worried about losing their jobs. It could destroy your life, you know. They're working at this one job for 30 years so they can have a retirement at the end of their of their work career. That's their whole thing with their pension and everything. What if you had a personal family emergency and you needed to, like in 2099 to 2002, I wasn't working at a public job then. 99 to 2000. When I built my shack, you know, and lived in it. My dad was having heart failure. And I stayed with him in his trailer and um, and took care of him. And helped him and lived with him while he was sick. Before he had his heart attack in 2002. But the main thing is, you see, one thing that got me into living in tiny spaces. From my birth, up until I was 14, my mom bought this house. We always lived in trailers. I mean, my parents were married in the 70s when I was a little child. And they lived in like a 10 by 50 mobile home. And this was an old trailer, like a 1963 model. And it had slide-in pocket doors. For the bedrooms, it had slide-in pocket doors to go into the bedrooms. And it was like a 1963 10 by 50 mobile home. And then my parents got divorced in 1980, and I was born in 74, so... um. My mom bought a mobile home, put it in a trailer park. When well, she got a divorce from my dad, and um, it was a 12 by 60. And I had a 10 by 12 foot bedroom, and I thought I was queen of the world with the 10 by 12 bedroom and a mobile home with a big picture window in the front of the trailer, you know. And the mobile home was a 1972 model. Because it's not like the trailers of today, mobile homes they live in. It was a 1972 mobile home. So, um, and, um, my dad moved into a small trailer. And this was like your 1950s travel trailers. Like on the movie, The Long, Long Trailer with Lucy and Desi. The Long, Long Trailer. Look that movie up. And it was one of those old 1950s Cracker Box mobile home. Eight foot long, eight foot wide, thirty six feet long, eight by thirty six. My dad lived in that, you know. And each bedroom was just two bedrooms. Each bedroom was just big enough 
to, um, like a travel trailer. If you have a big travel trailer, you know how the bedroom is set up. That's how the bedrooms are set up in this mobile home. But basically, it's about being off-grid and free. And this song by Lobo, L-O-B-O, it is a group that sang in the 60s and 70s. And the song is called Walk Away From It All. And if I was working at a miserable job and I was stuck in a miserable life, you know, just like Elvis Travel said he lived with his sister and the kids were nuts and going crazy. You know. He was doing that and he was free. Because he had the ability to walk away from it all. The song by Lobo, Walk Away From It All. Look that song up. So, walk away from it all. If what you're doing isn't doing for you, walk away from it all. You live in the van life and you're free. Tiny houses. You know, you you can walk away from it all. You can be free to do what you want to do and have your own life, you know. Live in your own freedom. What about freedom, you know? It's like hippies, you know? It's like a hippie vibe mentality. You know, that's what they called it, you know, back then. Freedom. Not having to be part of the system. And back in the 60s and 70s, the, the hippies, they called it working for the man. You know, you're working for the man. You know, you're part of the system. You're working for the man. You're putting a suit on. You're going to your job. You're working for the man. You know, and I don't want to have to work for the man. I want to be me and be free. Just like that song, Leonard Skinner, you know, Free Bird. That's what it's all about is being a free bird. And I understand gypsies. And I understand how the gypsies would have to rip people off and do things to survive, you know, and do things. And if you're living on your own, just don't do anything to really hurt anybody. You know, but being free, sometimes we have to, you know, that's about being free, living free, and free as a bird, and the, excuse me, hippie life, you know. Hippified way of living. And that communes, growing their own vegetables, living in vans, you know, it's what it's all about, is freedom. Your own personal freedom. And you don't have to, and I feel like, in communist countries, let me tell you, you have all the security and everything given to you in the former Soviet Union or in China. But did you know, in the former Soviet Union or in China, it's illegal not to work? Did you know that your health insurance and everything goes through your job in the Soviet Union? Did you know that you, in the Soviet Union, if you're going to work in the Soviet Union, they give you a job, you have to go there. And the freedom of an American is to quit your job. It's the freedom to quit your job. It's the freedom to say, you know, that song by Johnny Paycheck. Take this job and shove it. You know, there's nothing more American than that song. Take this job and shove it by Johnny Paycheck. And people guilt you into keeping a job you hate no matter what happens. And they guilt you into it. But you have to realize as an American, that's my freedom. Because it's take this job and shove it by Johnny Paycheck. You know, my dad in the 70s, you know, he had trouble holding the job. He had mental problems, but he tried to work anyway because he didn't have an 